Well, the government last week announced Australia would accept 12,000 refugees fleeing Syria on top of its current humanitarian intake. It's a move welcomed by much of the community, with hundreds of families opening their own homes to refugees. Well, the Australian Homestay Network is one program that has been inundated with offers to help. Heather Palou is one of those people and joins us uh, in the studio and Executive Director of the Australian Homestay Network, David Bycroft, joins us also from Brisbane. Welcome to both of you. Okay. Heather, mm -hmm. what, what has prompted you to, to act in this way? Why are you willing to, to host some asylum seekers? I was involved with the Homestay program back in 2012 uh, when it was first introduced for the refugees. Uh, I think the plight which I have seen throughout the world, a humanitarian plight which was there, um, I, I just felt a great urge to help them as much as I could and I found out about the Homestay program through the media and just took it from there and I, I actually had to go through a culling process, a very, very um, thorough in, in their assessment to determine if you're a suitable host and yes, I was successful in that and I thought it was just a brilliant program. So, so you literally throw open your home. Yes, uh, I do. <laughs> how many people could you cater for? Uh, at that point, I was I could have up to three in my home. As I said, homestay is quite strict on your home and the requirements and meeting the criteria. They come out and assess your home, assess you individually, you're interviewed and it's it's very, very thorough process. Um, but yeah, I, I could take three. Yeah. Fascinating experience. David Bycroft, if you could just explain to us what is the process for those people out there in the community who were considering, you know, putting their hand up to open their homes to this influx of, of uh, refugees from Syria. We're now looking at uh, some 12,000, which is going to be the largest intake, I understand, since World War II. Just what is the process for those who want to become involved with homestay? Yeah, at the moment we're just taking registrations of interest because we want to show the state governments and federal government just what the level of support is. It's overwhelming us at the moment and we've done very little promotion of the campaign. We've had over 1,200 houses put their hands up. Uh, we will process those once we understand what our role will be. However, we're seeing them come from all parts of Australia. So there's just as many coming from regional Australia as there are coming from capital cities. So that's a very good result. And we, we support placement across regions, not all in one city. In your view, is this the best way, initially at least, to, to integrate the refugees into the community? When we did this program back in uh, 2012 and 13 for the asylum seekers coming out of detention centre, it was absolutely the best way to integrate them into the community and give them a one-on-one -on -one support. People like Heather, we had 4,000 hosts registered during that time. We're expecting many more than that with the visuals we're seeing from Europe now. Heather, can you just explain to us what it was like for you and for those who were coming into your home for the first time? Were there issues, for instance, say around language barrier, cultural, religious issues? What, what was it like? How did you manage that process? I think part of the assessment was beneficial in the sense that me being a Muslim and also living in a um, community where you've got a very strong Islamic network which is there to support those people, um, I could very quickly and readily network them into the community and those community supports. <coughs> I had one particular young man who was only 21, um, a Rohingya, um, six of his family um, he lost, his village was burnt down. Um, he, I do believe, he had post-traumatic stress syndrome as well. but. He wanted to know, where are the Rohingya? I myself didn't know. Mm. I, I thought, gosh, how am I going to help him? But I networked in the community. Basically, within three days, he had been the community there, took him on board under, his, under their wing, um, found him a place to um, settle. And uh, he, he, I think he stayed in my place four days before he was moved on. And that's a good thing with the homestay program. We, are re we really work at getting them onto the next step, getting them in. So I myself didn't experience any issues at all. Um, if anything, my life was enriched by their stories and um, I, I greatly benefited from that. Well, what is, the, Heather, what, for you, what, what is the time frame that you expect? Uh, you say that that was four days. Yes. How long are you told that possibly you could be hosting people? Four to six weeks. And I never had anyone exceed that. We could always move them on, get them placed into the community beyond, um, within that time frame. 
Um, so yeah, it, it was very, very successful program back in 212, yeah, for sure. David Bycroft, just finally with you, are you anticipating that there will be greater government support of programs such as Homestay, which will play such a vital role in this uh, sort of process? Yes, to take 12,000 asylum seekers or refugees quickly, and that's what we need to do. We're going to need every resource the community can offer. And I think hosts like Heather are, are genuine, and they help gatekeep the placement of the refugees into settlement service type programs. But we need to take many, and we need to take them as soon as possible. David Bycroft and Heather Palou, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.